Welcome back to another episode of Silent Pals Go to the Movies. This is another Throwback Thursday review. I'm here with my friend Tuli. Say hi, Tuli. Hi, guys. So today we're going to be talking about Jumanji from 1995. And just a fair warning, there's going to be spoilers up ahead, so you've been warned. When two kids find and play a magical board game, they release a man that was trapped in it for decades, along with a host of dangers that can only be stopped by finishing the game and calling out its name, Jumanji. So if you want to find out the cast members and other information, click on the link below. So I remember this film when I was a kid. I think I was in middle school, and one of my English teachers brought it up. She said, can you imagine that this book she held up the jumanji book it's going to be made into a movie and it was a really short book and she's like can you believe hollywood they have nothing better to do but just take something that doesn't have more than 30 pages and mix it into a movie we were kind of on her side like yeah they should make better movies or something but i got sold into the idea that you can take a certain material thing that's just really simple and make extrapolate from it and create a world or a franchise and even then when i saw the movie i liked the movie and i thought it was really well done it had elements from the actual book, so it wasn't basically making up stories or different things. You actually felt that it was the board game. So for me now as an adult, I think it's the idea of getting source material and extrapolating from there. And as long as you still have the core and the essence, it should be a good adaptation. For me, this film, a pro is going to be the nostalgia factor that personally, when I was a kid, I went with my dad to go see the movie and back then... The CGs and everything blew us away. It was amazing. And my dad's a fan of, you know, animals. So him seeing the monkeys and the stampede and the crocodile and everything for him was like eye pleasing. For me, it was the whole adventure that, you know, you played a board game and it was magical and stuff like that. The other thing is the pro. I believe this movie, it's fun for kids and you sharing it with other generations by telling them, hey, look, this is what I grew up on. Now that we have the new movies, isn't they're not reboots, they're continuations of this film. Go see the new film with the kids, but before that, show them this one, because my next pro is cast. Robin Williams and everybody in the movie is amazing. They added this extra element, Robin Williams, you know, his comedy, his acting, and the cop, his jokes, and every time something happened, his car got messed up step by step to the point where like it got crumbled up so all these factors just added up to a very enjoyable movie for me the whole idea of it being a family movie that you can go see it with kids adults and everything to me was an amazing thing now moving on to my cons the cg did not age well in this film but it was cold at the time like i said on one of my pros was that the cg blew me away especially the monkeys back in the day it was seamlessly but i guess because of the formats that we have now once you see it like you can actually see the cg not blending in with the background and also i felt that, like the message that came in the movie about the father and son the father treating the kid as a man or telling him to man up and stuff like that and the final message was added as a final last minute idea to the film it didn't really get implanted in me or i didn't see get developed throughout the film so for me that's a little con that i would put in there i would also wanted to see that the kids from 1869 finished the game before they buried it because i know we can say that they finished it that's why they're burying it but i would have liked it to see the game close or something or them bro and then you know say jumanji and then close it then bury it next thing is one of my questions is this is not a pro or a con it's just a question i really wanted to know that if judy and peter remember sarah and alan at the end of the movie because we never clear that up and i know the answer for me is no because it's the time continuum thing they were not born or you know they went back and everything alan and sarah do remember them but they never lived through that timeline it would have been kind of funny if they kind of had like a little deja vu or something like hey i think i've seen you before or something something along that lines i would appreciate it better also one of the things is the ending we see the ending in france when the people are walking along the beach and they're speaking french we hear the drums but now that the new movie came out we see that the board game is back in the US, so we don't see there's a chunk missing. So I don't understand if that chunk was left purposely there and they're going to revisit it later in the new franchise or it's just this thing that we're not going to talk about. So with that, I'm going to pass it on to my friend Tuli and see how he saw this movie. 
So just like Sal, I saw this film in the 90s when I was still a kid. I didn't see it in theaters. I saw it when it came out on VHS. I think one of my aunt, they bought the film. And normally when my family went over to visit them, they would have movies on. This was one of the films that they had on at that, that particular time. And overall, as a kid, I thought the film was great. Uh, it was fun. It was crazy. You know, all the sort of animals and environmental hazards that you would expect from like like a jungle environment. You know, they even introduced like quicksand and stuff in this film. So it, it, they, they just presented the situation where you had to overcome natural circumstances, you know, traps, you know, vicious creatures, hunters. You know, as a kid, I found that very exciting. But I think the thing that really allowed me to lash on to this film as a kid was Robin Williams. It was me coming off of seeing some of Robin Williams' earlier work as a kid. You know, things like Aladdin, Mrs. Doubtfire. That really got me to appreciate Robin Williams as an actor. And again, this is me looking at him as a kid at the time. He was, you know, a very fun and lovable guy. When I saw Jumanji and I saw that he was in this film, I was like, I was all on board. It's like, I really like this actor based on some of the, the works that I've seen. I could say that Robin Williams was just one of those actors that I grew up with as a kid where if I knew that he was in this movie, I would want to see it so this was again just jumanji being one of them but now having re-watched it you know years later there are some flaws about the film that sort of irked me sal did mention the cg and how it didn't really hold up but i would also mention that the same sort of craziness that i found i enjoyed as a kid uh, i found it to be a bit chaotic now as an adult in that it kind of took away from the the story yes there there was a story to be told here the sort of story that a character goes through to sort of redeem themselves to overcome like some sort of trauma that they had as a kid uh, as we saw in this film like in particular sarah who was alan's childhood friend how she became mentally disturbed after alan perished into this game board and how i would expect nobody to have believed her if she came out and said that you know alan when disappearing because of this particular game board, I kind of see where Sarah, as she grew up to an adult, how she was still having this sort of cloud, you know, looming over her. And, you know, with Alan coming back from the game board and with Alan and Sarah going back to finish the game with Judy and Peter, uh, who were played by Kirsten Dunst and Bradley Pierce, respectively. I felt like the story just sort of clashed with the chaos too much for my personal preference I, I felt like the movie should have really slowed down to handle some of these situations because the film does deal with death with the you know the loss of the parents i thought there should have been more attention to those aspects i thought that you know with the concept of, of death being in the film something so delicate and a topic that you're introducing to like kids because i think for the most part this the demographic for this particular film was aimed for kids that maybe they should have handle that in a more secluded area like don't let the chaos sort of mask it like talk about it so that we can understand where these characters were all coming from even beyond all of that i think the one thing that sort of bothered me about this film was how everything was sort of wrapped up so neatly at the end that there was in a way no consequence to the actions of these people despite the game acting as a tool to progress the story and yet sort of being like a villain in a way because it was what kind of caused a lot of these things to transpire in in a way like if you beat the game everything just goes back to normal there wasn't like any to me at least there, there weren't any consequences because of this like everything we just just went back to normal or things that felt out of place went back to the way they were with with the parents not dying the way they did again as a kid i might have enjoyed that because you know it's those it's one of those happily ever after sort of feel but now you know having watched the film again and reflecting upon it i i feel like for characters to go through like arcs and stuff they need to sort of overcome these sort of obstacles that they have endured and i felt like rewarding them in this sort of manner like what jumanji did with their ending it left me with more questions than answers at the end so overall like my grade for this film i would come i would i'm going to do a combination of my experience as a kid and me as an adult having watched the film again as alluded earlier as a kid i enjoyed the film probably would have given it like a seven or eight but again now as an adult from what i can for, for for my personal taste i would probably give it a five so if i were to sort of average things out it would probably be around like a six to a 6.5 as my uh as my grade for jumanji 
I think my grade would be the same six and a half out of 10. That's with the extra point for the nostalgia factor. The other thing I want to add is that this movie continues with the recent movies, the Jumanji and the Jumanji, the next level that just came out recently. And I think the last movie that came out kind of placed a little better by fixing some of the things in the first part that were missing. For example, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but in the first movie, once we see them finish the game, like Tuli said, everything ramps up really quickly. We see Alan and Sarah grow up to meet Judy and Peter with their parents. So that means that their Aunt Nora was not there. And we don't know what happened to her until we see the recent movie. She shows up, Nora, as a restaurant owner. So to me, that kind of makes more sense and now that's a really long time for me to go like ah now i see it versus i wanted to see it there like tuli said the beginning when basically alan goes into the board game and they flash forward to you know the future when the kids are moving into this old house you know what happened then i wanted to see the dad you know go into depression and basically mourn his lost child lose the company and everything the whole town degrades i wanted to see that for that con that i had that the message about the father and son that would have played really well if they developed that story then instead of saying that sarah just went crazy and she was talking about bats and alan going into a board game you know nobody believed her i wanted to see that instead of her just growing up and saying they called me crazy so for me this movie like Tuli said now it has its flaws as an adult so it gets a six and a half out of ten for me so that does it for this review of Jumanji please join us next time when we are going to review Raging Bull he's just been a contender too long he'll be all right as soon as he gets his shot and then everything will be okay you won't have to go fucking run around like a plot zone he's never going to be champ too many people hate him Please like, comment, and subscribe. You can find our social media links down below. And like always, keep watching movies.